Hello, Detective Boswick. I want to play a game. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're explaining the ending of Spiral. Play me. He could be anywhere. He could be anyone. You want to play a game? For this video, we'll be providing a deep dive into the final act of this Saw successor, exploring the themes, symbolism, and what it could mean for the future. In case you haven't seen Spiral yet, consider this your spoiler alert. What did you think of Spiral? What's your take on the ending? Let us know in the comments. Hello, Detective Banks. I'm here to help reform the Metro Police, to remind them of their oath to the people of this city. Although it derives from the Book of Saw, Spiral changes up the game with a brand new set of players. The film does keep several long-standing traditions alive, however, including the complex death traps and a twist ending. The final act of Spiral returns to the franchise's twisted roots when Chris Rock's detective Zeke Banks figures out who's been sending him body parts in boxes. It's none other than his rookie partner, William Shank. Wait, I thought the Jigsaw Killer was dead. As we see through flashbacks, Shank is revealed to be the son of the witness who was murdered in cold blood by a crooked cop. Zeke actually crossed paths with a then preteen Shank, comforting him after his father's death. Adopting the alias of William Shank, he infiltrated the police department to target officers who have misused their power. Zeke reported the cop who took Shank's father's life. Thus, Shank asks Zeke to become his partner in crime, together serving a bloodier brand of justice. Detective Banks, let's get to Oh. Yep. While Shank was inspired by John Kramer, he doesn't claim to be one of his apprentices like Amanda Young or Detective Mark Hoffman. Shank also has different motivations, seeking to clean up law enforcement by sniffing and snuffing out the corrupt cops. Whoever did this has another motive, something personal. Shank dropped several clues that he was the Jigsaw copycat, mentioning that he joined the force because of Zeke's father and that he had been waiting for this opportunity since a young age. It was also telling that we never saw his wife and kid, who turn out to be fabrications. What are you doing? Oh, it's just, uh, family. This is my wife, Emma. This is my son, Charlie. Shoot. We're not sure why Shank went to the trouble of devising a phony family, but we suppose it fleshed out his backstory. The skinned body at the butcher shop was perhaps the biggest indicator of Shank's true identity, at least for the audience. Receiving a hunk of skin with a tattoo resembling Shanks, Zeke is led to believe that the skinned victim was his partner. With all the other victims, we see their deaths play out in gruesome detail. The skinned victim's fate takes place off-screen, though, suggesting that it could be someone other than Shank. It turns out that the skinned victim is actually Detective Fitch, who lost more than his fingers after failing to survive his death trap. Shank conceals his identity by wearing a pig mask. This look isn't new to the Saw franchise, as John Kramer and several of his apprentices wore pig masks. James Wan and Lee Winnell felt a pig mask would best represent Jigsaw's worldview that society was going rotten. The pig mask ultimately carries a more significant meaning, since John and Jill's baby was supposed to be born during the Chinese Zodiac's Year of the Pig. For Shank, however, the pig aesthetic could mean something else. After all, pig is a derogatory term for cops who Shank exclusively murders. So even if Shank didn't take a page from Jigsaw's book, a pig mask would still be a fitting disguise. One of the cops that Shank abducts is Zeke's father, Marcus Banks, who is hooked up to an elaborate death trap in the finale. Hello, Detective Banks. When was the last time you saw your father? Marcus also has blood on his hands, letting corruption slide in his department for years. Giving Zeke a gun with one bullet, Shank plays a final mind game. Zeke can either shoot a target that'll release his father or shoot Shank. If Zeke chooses the latter, Marcus dies. I could've killed you. What are you talking about? I got the gun. I could've killed you. Zeke ultimately saves his father, but Shank had a backup plan. Shank is a literal puppet master, rigging the trap to make it look like the stringed up Marcus is about to open fire as a police squad enters. Despite Zeke's pleas, Marcus is gunned down while Shank makes a clean getaway down an elevator. 
Shank might not use Billy the Puppet, but he does borrow the red spiral sign painted on his cheeks. The spiral's presence in this film can be interpreted in a few different ways. On the one hand, it symbolizes the seemingly never-ending cycle of police misconduct that both Zeke and Shank are fighting against, albeit in different ways. It also plays into the cycle of violence that's been a staple of this franchise from the beginning. How much blood will you shed to stay alive, Paul? On that note, the spiral may represent things coming full circle, as this film's final act mirrors the ending of the original Saw. Although Shank didn't pose as a dead body, he was hiding in plain sight the whole time. Like Adam Stanhite, Zeke is left screaming as the villain escapes as some familiar music plays and the screen goes black. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Since spirals can go on indefinitely, it's safe to assume this isn't the last we'll see of Shank. A spiral TV series is in early talks, and the upcoming 10th film in the franchise will reportedly be called Saw X. Does that mean the next movie will shine the spotlight back on Jigsaw? Or being a Jigsaw copycat, maybe Shank's crimes could attract the attention of Logan Nelson, Lawrence Gordon, or another living disciple of John Kramer? No! Game over. No! Chris Rock has stated that he'd be down for reprising his role as Zeke. If Zeke were to track Shank down in a sequel, would he hang on to his morality, or would he put revenge before justice? In any case, the game is far from over. We're gonna tear this city apart. Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.